Hey, this is Luke Simons with Salt Strong. Today I wanted to share with you the results from an exploration trip I took. I actually took uh, the crazy dog Otis out there with me. It was just me and him and a couple GoPros, but had a really fun day on the water, caught some good fish. But the cool thing was, it was to an area that I've never been to before. Um, so I just did really three, I say three overall lessons that helped me have success while exploring a new area, even though I was fishing with a uh, crazy dog who was awfully loud on the water. So the first thing is just reading online maps. I spent a little time on the, you know, before the trip and I just looked at the satellite imagery of the entire area, of, of course, along with the tides and the, uh, and the weather predictions, I set a game plan. Very, very important. Second part is that I, I was, once I was on the water, I paid attention to the details. Extremely important, especially when exploring a new area that you never go to, that you've never been to before, because there's only so much information you gather from the online maps. The assessing the water area is incredibly important, and it's, it's probably more important than, than reading the maps. And so I'll give you a couple tips there. The third thing is, is managing the wind. Uh, this factor is, is uh, very, uh, very important in the wintertime, especially here in Florida. We get a strong northeast wind and a, a lot of different mornings. And this day was much windier than I expected. And so it's all about, you know, how do you manage the wind? How do you, how do you uh, use these artificial lures uh, accurately and, and successfully, even though that wind is ripping at, you know, 15 plus miles an hour? All right, so the, the first lesson on display is, uh, is just assessing the area, right? Just keeping the eyes open for feeding activity. So here's what happened, and within the first probably two minutes of getting on the water, I was, wasn't even past the, uh, the no-wake zone, and I, I just noticed some feeding activity. So I went there, and turns out it was a good decision. Right, so I pinned myself down right on the ledge here, see if we can't pick off some fish. That's something. There we are. Nice fish. Oh, oh no. That was a solid fish. Right in that pothole. There we go. Got something. A little, little grouper. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Calm down. Calm down, bub. Check this out, this is what he's eating right here. Little greenback, small grouper. Here's what he's, here's what he's chewing on. All right, so you saw there it had some action in, in the first, uh, really first 15 minutes, uh, which is always always nice, uh, especially when uh, exploring a new area. So here's, here's the lure that I was using, and you saw that grouper uh, spit up that, that, that white bait. And this lure is a little jig that I was using. I like throwing these type of jigs um, when, when I'm fishing water that's, that's a little bit more than three feet deep. So I was casting into the potholes. Those potholes were about maybe three to five feet, depending on how far away from the edge it was. And then I was posted up in about maybe two feet of water. So I was up in the shallows, casting a little bit deeper. I was, I was casting into the current and then bringing it with the current, which is the, the best way to do it. But, uh, but these little jigs, so coincidentally, um, that this jig was about the same size as that white bait that you saw me holding up, maybe a tad bigger, but this was perfectly resembling the type of bait that was in the area and I was just bouncing it along the bottom. So this is a great lure for fishing the shallows. And then uh, after I, I caught that grouper and I caught another small grouper and I missed that big fish and I, I kept casting, casting, casting and um, was just getting some, some bites, but, but nothing good. So I wanted to cover the shallower water. So this is the water a little bit further over. And to do that, I like to throw a, a bait that's a little bit lighter. And uh, this is a DOA cow. Um, so here's the, uh, here's the actual, the actual lure. So it's a four inch, four inch jerk bait, split tail design. And uh, oh, the, the jig I was using was a one eighth ounce jig head with these uh, Z-Man uh, called minnows, a three inch minnow Z and it's the red, red bone color I uh, was working. So um, what you'll see here is that color doesn't matter because I was catching fish on uh, lures of all different colors. It's more about the presentation. So here's the lure that I switched over to in this next clip. And as you'll see, I had some pretty quick success. I got a little trout. 
good. And it's off. Sorry, bud. All right, so I caught that trout and actually caught a couple more. They were all they were all small trout. And as I was leaving, I was about to pick up and leave, and I just thought, let me just drift. I'll just let the wind take me down this flat a little bit further. I switched back to this uh, to this this paddle tail jig because it allowed me to fish the deeper water and fish a little bit faster because that wind was really pushing me fast, and it's really difficult to uh, to properly present this split tail lure when I'm when I'm going fast. So I wanted to use this so that I could just cover more water faster. And uh, as I got to down the flat, I caught, picked off a couple more dink fish, but most importantly is that I just kept my eyes open. And typically the fish are hanging around the grass, but in this instance, I got a little bit past the grass, just kept fishing, I thought I'd go another 15 yards. And sure enough, I started seeing some snook uh, going down this, uh, this shoreline where I was fishing. The snook were right on the edge and they were coming towards me. And so I finally, I finally veered off a little bit, and then, uh, and then I saw one snook hanging out on, it was super clear water, it was really shallow, it was maybe like a foot and a half deep, and the snook was just right up on the sand uh, feeding. And I got one cast up to it and took it about maybe three or four feet in front of it, and that thing went out and popped it. Good snook up there in the shallows. Oh, got him, got him, nice. Nice. Thing came up and popped it. Decent size one. That's a good lesson on always keeping the eyes open. I was just about to leave and started seeing this snook. Oh, it is. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, sit. Snook. There he goes. All right, so I caught that snook and I kept drifting down a little bit and didn't see that many more snook. So I thought, let me just go back to my game plan. Uh, you know, I assessed the area, I, I saw some, some activity, so it paid off. So now let's go back to the plan, let's get back on track. And uh, so the, the next spot was a shallow grass flat that I was hoping to catch really a slam where I'd be able to catch snook, trout, and redfish. And, uh, and this, this area is a really large flat, and so I didn't know exactly what depth the fish were going to be on. So I, I chose an area that allowed me to fish, you know, both the really shallow water, you know, maybe 12 inches, uh, all the way down to three feet so that I can gauge where those fish were. And I switched over, so I was using this, uh, this same hook. I was fishing the shallows. Remember, uh, I really like this uh, weighted, weighted hook style type of bait for the shallows. But I switched over to this green gulp. I just rigged one of these, it's a five inch bait on the same hook. This is a lure that I, that I really like. And so I was using that and I hooked him into to, to a solid trout. There we are. Nice trout. And about 15 to 20 minutes later, I hooked into this fun size snook. Oh, snook. What you think, Otis? <laughs> Good job, bud. Good job. All right, so I tried one more area after that, is, and I, I just honed in on the same depth that I was seeing, the, the, that snook and the trout up on the flat. They were in about two feet of water, plus or minus, hanging around the potholes. So I went to a different section of the flat. I was looking for redfish, trying to just get a slam on the boat, and unfortunately, I didn't get the, the redfish on the boat, but I caught a you know, handful more trout. All of them are small, but still fun. But the, the lesson that I mentioned before about, uh, about fishing in the wind, incredibly important, especially when using light, you know, light jerk baits, especially like this one where it's just a, a weighted hook. If you're fishing, fishing up in the shallows, it is really hard to retrieve a, a, a lure like this in the wind if you don't do this one tip. And the tip is to actually hold 
the, the line on the water. Try to try to take the wind out of the factor. Because if you're if you're going crosswind and trying to retrieve a light bait like this, just the uh, the, the drag on the line is going to be moving the bait the entire time. So it's gonna it's not going to have the 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 kind of up and down motion that you're looking for. It's just going to slowly push it. So, and again, it sometimes does work, but the, the presentation doesn't look as natural as it would otherwise. Um, also is you, you completely lose your feeling. So you can't feel the strikes. You're not going to get as good a hook sets because there's just so much bend in the line. So the trick for the wind, as you see in, in the clips, is to, is to have the rod tip down. Have it down, get that line on the water because once it's on the water, that wind's not going to take it out to a big bow. You'll get a little bit of bowing with current, but when the wind's going 15 miles an hour or more, um, I would much rather have a slight current moving the line than, you know, than that strong wind. So uh, again, a very important tip uh, for Fish the Wind is keep that rod tip down, maximize your feel, make sure you can feel everything that's going on, and then uh, you know, have a proper hook set as soon as you do get that strike. All right, so final conclusion is just the importance of, of first of all, getting a plan and then most importantly is assessing an area. And, and if you need help with that, we have an insider fishing club. And, and for the club members, we actually put together a, a detailed course that gives you everything you possibly need to know about reading online maps, about you know, which map is better than others, you know, going to being Google and a variety of others, how to use them, how to assess you know, an oyster bar versus a grass flat versus just a flat out dark bottom. Just the, again, the things that they're, they're, they're kind of small in nature, but when put together is a complete game changer. It'll enable you to go out to brand new areas and consistently catch fish because we also teach the assessing the water uh, portion as well, what to look for, you know, how, to, how to define a feeding zone versus a dead zone because most people, they, they're just in the wrong spot. You know, they, they're in the dead zones and it's all about maximizing your time in the feeding zones and minimizing your time in the dead zones. And that's what this course for our Insider members uh, will teach you. So if you're interested about that course, uh, check out our Insider Club membership because this is uh, where we really give our best information. There is an application for this though. We don't allow everybody in because we actually show our exact spot. So all of these fish that, that we're featuring in this video plus we have 60 to 70 past trips, is we show exactly where everything was caught. We get on the lowest level of either you know, Google or Bing Maps and show you exactly where the fish were holding so that you can use those same trends in your area. So yeah, if you wanna learn more about that, again, saltstrong.com forward slash insider, and there you can uh, learn more about it and apply. So anyhow, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you liked it. If you have any questions, Leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.